are a lot of things that we might do in order to play this piece with less effort. And of course, one of the most important things is using gravity instead of muscle effort as often as possible. For example, from the very beginning, instead of using your muscle effort for these octaves, you might actually play them just with the weight of the hands. It's kind of throwing your hand into the keyboard in order to get an intensive sound. And all the other fingers are playing just lighter. Also, another important thing here would be to release your fingers immediately. So when you hit that octave, you release your fingers immediately. Because releasing your fingers, releasing your arm, might help you to regroup your hand and starting to play the next phrase. That one. There are a lot of passages, of course, in both hands, and there are two ways of playing them. So first way is being heavily promoted, actually, in music education still is working with isolated fingers and making sure that each finger uh, works properly. Like that. The problem with that is that it is exactly how people kill their hands most of the time because working with isolated fingers exhausts your muscles a lot actually and causes overuse and uh, health issues. The first thing that we might reduce is not pulling fingers up because when you pull fingers up you use these muscles on the upper side of the arm muscles that are actually weaker than these ones that we use for grasping things and that movement lifting your fingers is not actually that natural for us and causes a lot of overuse. So instead of pulling fingers up, we might actually just release them. Just control that we release our muscles as soon as the finger is done. So, for example, playing that group of four notes, I just control that I transfer the weight of the hand from finger to finger, releasing each finger when it is done. It takes actually some time to get used to this way of playing, especially if you never thought about it, but believe me, it's very beneficial and over a long term is very, is very much safer and much more efficient than actually pulling your fingers up all the time. Then, of course, we have here a fourth finger issue because there are a lot of passages, a lot of groups of four notes, and the fourth finger should sound as clear as all the other fingers. That is very difficult because it's the weakest finger that we have. Very often people concentrate themselves on training the fourth finger and making it as strong as all the other fingers, which is actually not possible because physiologically this finger will always be dependent. It is always bound to the, to the third finger. So instead of exhausting this finger and trying to train it, we can just accept the fact that this finger is the weakest one and help it a little bit. For example, in this group of four notes, I might use a very tiny hand rotation. You see, it's a very tiny movement, but I still might help this finger to sound, to press the key using the weight of my hand. Just a very small rotation after the third finger is done. Same here. The only thing to consider here is this combination between the third and the fourth finger. Because the third finger is very strong one and quite heavy one, so it has always a tendency to stay in the key longer than necessary. So very often you have something like... Like those fingers stuck together. So it's very important to control that while you rotate your hand, helping your fourth finger you release your third finger properly. Again, I repeat myself, it's not necessary to pull that finger all the way up, because that's a very awkward situation for both of these fingers. But you might just point a little bit of attention to that finger, controlling that you release it properly. So usually I start from a moderate tempo and give myself time to get used to, to the material. 
I don't try to force things and uh, to play them fast immediately because this is exactly how you learn tension. And then when you raise tempo little bit by little bit, you might add a slight wrist movement to unify four notes of the group. So it's a very tiny movement, but still it helps to make things smoother. All kinds of broken chords in a faster tempo like these ones. Very often I observe kind of a exaggerated rotation here when people play like that. So what often happens here is that your thumb stays very far from your target and then you have to rotate your hand a lot and you do that quickly. And then you have some inertia. So your hand kind of continues to fly somewhere but you have to return it back so so that you have a lot of tension and you have a lot of movement here that uh, distracts you. What is important here is trying to maintain the hand palm quite open without tension. You don't try to reach those notes, but just an opened hand palm. And then you just try to figure out how much of that movement of that rotation you need. So in my case, it would be just just a little bit. But even if I would play some wider structures that I can't take at once, for example, that one, I would still try to maintain an opened uh, shape in the hand and calculate how much of the movement I need. What is also important here, as soon as you reach your thumb, you try to reach some support in it and there is a video explaining what I mean by that. And as soon as you reach the bottom of the key, you just release that finger. You don't pull your hand anymore somewhere. You don't pull that finger away because all that costs you time that you don't have much here. So just to sum up all that, you maintain an open shape of the hand. Try to understand how much of that rotation you need in order to avoid inertia that would pull your hand somewhere away and you release the thumb as soon as you reached the bottom of the key. And as soon as you will figure out all these things, you will be able to play these chords in any tempo very efficiently and without any tension. Same in the right hand actually. First of all, you might uh, use the weight of the hand and rotation uh, for these accents. So you don't really uh, use any muscle effort, but you just use rotation. For example, here my hand goes a little bit toward the right side, which gives me enough power to hit that note with the thumb. Now opposite. Then, of course, you minimize that movement, but still you use rotation and the weight of the hand instead of muscle effort. Same here. I would really love to hear that fifth finger. And in order to hit that, you don't use any muscle effort. You actually think about stability of that finger. And again, I have a video about that finger, uh, about stability of this finger and how to use it and how to gain it. And rotation between the thumb and the fifth finger. Same here, releasing your hand, releasing your wrist and using gravity in order to hit that chord. And as soon as you reach the bottom of the key, again, you just release your hand. You don't really hold that chord with tension. Actually, very often I release this chord earlier, actually. I don't hold it till the end of the bar just in order to shake off any tension because anyway, I play that with pedal. So as you see, I use a very focused hit using the weight of my hand, releasing my hand and using a pedal in order to connect them. For all these passages, especially in the left hand, because for most of the people left hand, will uh, be more problematic than the right hand. I try to break the work into stages. So 
stage number one would be just controlling that I don't have any tension in any finger and that I have enough stability in each finger. So it would be like... So what I control here that I have enough stability in each finger, uh, in the knuckle bridge especially, but enough flexibility and release in the arm and wrist. This way of playing actually is very much like walking, because walking doesn't really make us exhausted if we are healthy, of course. And when you walk, you don't actually lift your legs too high, let's say, all the way to the chest, because that would be a very funny way of walking and should be very tiring. But when it comes to piano playing, a lot of uh, musicians and music teachers consider that to be absolutely normal, working with your fingers so much and lifting your fingers. So step number one would be controlling that each finger is stable enough and that I release fingers immediately when they are done. So as you see, now I'm playing like fingers one by one. Uh, that sounds quite primitive, but absolutely necessary step in order to get rid of tension. And then as soon as I feel comfortable with that, I start grouping them using my wrist. So at this stage, I might unify groups of four notes. Then I might change grouping. Like that. And as soon as I feel comfortable with that, I start building longer lines following those uh, long slurs written by Chopin. And actually, if you have enough stability in your fingers and you use gravity instead of muscle effort, playing any kind of chords like these ones works actually as a massage. So after all these passages that you have to play in a faster tempo, you might use these chords in order to rest a lot and to recover and in order to voice the upper voice in these chords, sometimes it's just enough to turn your wrist a little bit, like that. Because if I would hold it aligned to the keyboard, there is a huge risk that my thumb will sound louder. Absolutely the same by these accents. I release my hand, I release my hand and go higher, and use gravity in order to provide this accent. Then we have this devil's scale when we have to provide a lot of tension in music, not in muscles. And in order to do that, we should control that. We use gravity in order to hit that accented note and use our wrist in order to play the second note, the resolution lighter. And then, of course, we build them in the line, so each next accent would be actually the stronger than the previous one. And I personally prefer to do that diminuendo much later, just at the very end of the bar, marking this chord actually even more intensively than making diminuendo just after it, creating some turbulence in dynamics. Also in this spot, using rotation instead of muscle effort might help you to provide a very nice shape of that passage without much effort. In the next bar, you do that crescendo only at the very end of the bar. All that is played very lightly and only the last group you play more intensively. And also what is important here, after you reach this uh, accented fourth beat, and release your hand in order to be able to start really softly again. I really try to care about polyphony in the next phrase. Marking that C sharp. Because I want to hear how the color of the C sharp changes when the harmony changes. And then I want
want to hear a resolution of this chord. Again, using the gravity in order to provide this accent. If you want to avoid a root sound while falling down on this note, just use your wrist in order to cushion the shock. Then, of course, there are a lot of tricks with fingering that we might do. For example, here, I prefer to disconnect these slurs with the hand, releasing my hand on the last note, moving it to the next position, starting the next position from the thumb, so like that. If you are able to release your hand on the uh, bar line, it's actually very convenient. Also here, of course, playing lightly and using rotation might help you a lot to spare a lot of energy. Then, of course, there is a big topic and big question about whether we are allowed or not to redistribute things between hands and I know a lot of heartbreaking stories about students that uh, have lost some points on a on an exam or uh, on a competition because they played with two hands, let's say something that is traditionally has to be played with one hand and so on. And I don't want to insist on anything, but 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 I believe that piano playing should be effortless and efficient. And it should be piano playing, not piano working, you know. So if there is a way to spare some practice time and to make things easier, I don't even think about it, I just go for it. So I think you already understand that all that is said about the issue of bar 25, where I don't see actually any reason why I should struggle playing those two voices in one hand. Instead of taking that quarter note in the left hand, what is just important here, in order to provide this polyphony, to play the thumb with more support, marking it slightly uh, relatively to these shorter notes, and release those shorter notes faster. And that applies to the whole section, actually, uh, also here. Oh, there are a couple of issues uh, with the next spot, with that one. First of all, we have to release our hand really quickly, and when you change positions like that, it's very important that first thing that moves toward the next position is your wrist, it's not your fingers, because when you move your fingers, you get tense. So while you finish playing that position, with the last finger of that position, your wrist already starts this movement a bit upwards and toward the next position. And then you release your fingers and focus them again for the next position. And for these last two notes, I usually uh, use actually three five. So three five, two three. order to use the strongest fingers. I actually try to avoid fourth finger as much as possible. Like here I have to play with the fourth finger, but the upper one I might play three, five, two, three. Now the next spot. Such spots I prefer to uh, learn with the dotted rhythm and there is a special video about how I use it. But also another tip that might help here is, since we are playing this part with pedal anyway, we might release the fifth finger a bit earlier. So it's not necessary to hold it all the way. In order to create this whirling effect in the scales, what we might do actually is really control that we start the line in the left hand very softly without any tension and make this crescendo only on the last three notes. So all of this is played very lightly, except of three notes at the end. 
while doing crescendo in the left hand, I'm doing actually diminuendo in my right hand. In this passage, I don't really connect A and uh, B sharp. I release my hand after A and focus my fifth finger in the very last moment and release the hand again. So. And finally, the last passage, of course, um, worries so many people always. What is important here also, again, play that lightly. You don't have to work through each note of it just because it's written too forte, because we might treat that fortissima as a character hit, not as a dynamics level. When I learned this passage through, I try to control that I have enough support in the fourth finger. When I learned that passage, I try to help my fourth finger with the hand again. So I just lean on it a little bit. And simultaneously with that, I move my wrist in order to uh, prepare my thumb. I do kind of that movement, you know, kind of jumping off the fourth finger. Releasing the hand immediately afterward. And when I go downwards, it's a little bit an opposite thing. So going up with the thumb and landing on the fourth finger. Now, the fourth finger should be kind of flat for that, so I just try to cover uh, that key with as much surface of it as possible. I don't really try to maintain that kind of shape because that's how you slip off, basically. So Sometimes, you know, I just press these black keys with a finger that is not aligned to the key, but kind of crisscross to it because it's just more, more secure, you know. And of course, while practicing, it's very useful to practice that with some time gaps. And first, feel that finger with the skin in order to be able to feel that finger a short moment before you hit it. And in most of cases, when you have such a dotted rhythm at the end, bam, you actually mark the shorter note more. So. The second one is more like a ricochet. You don't try to play that softer, but you don't try to play that note louder also. So that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.